the Young Turks Mentors. Our next uh, speaker topped the civil services examination in 1994. He's one of the people who pioneered e-governance in India. He created Asia's largest IT and investment cluster, Cyberabad, as part of a team. He is also the first serving IAS officer to have completed his MBA from the Harvard Business School. It is with great pleasure that we invite Shri Vatsa Krishna, uh, Secretary of IT, Government of Karnataka, to address us. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you why the road to digital India begins from Bangalore and not from Delhi. So media being media and Shireen being no expect, uh, exception to it, yesterday started the interview by asking me a question which was, why is Bangalore losing out to Hyderabad? Let me first start with data. Data says the following. By 2020, India's exports from IT would be 200 billion, give or take something. This city, this city alone will do 40% of those exports. 80 billion dollars from one city of India namely Bangalore, with 2 million IT professionals in Bangalore by 2020. We are today the second largest after Silicon Valley, which makes us not just the IT capital of India, not just the IT capital of Asia, but I would say the IT capital of the world after Silicon Valley. IT grew in India, in Hyderabad and Bangalore because of government. It did not grow because there was no government. It grew because of proactive government support at every step of the way. Think of it, if you had started not with no platform of the Infosys and TCSs backing you, you wouldn't be going where it is. For example, Ashish, I think Ashish's company, I don't know what you're valued at, you should be valued at $100 billion because you started by saying, I convinced my wife. That is not something any of us do. If you convince your wife, which any husband in this room would say, agree with, you're worth 100 years, go buy it. Tiwari. Buy the bloody company over. So, companies like Ashish and Naveen, which we're very, very proud of, happened on the platform of growth built by the IT giants. Okay, let me look at what, tell you about what government is planning to do and a couple of initiatives which would be of value to startups, which you can look forward to. First and foremost, government of Karnataka pioneered the idea of setting up the startup warehouse, along with NASCOM and Ravi Gururaj, who after making his millions, which he doesn't like talking about, uh, many millions, which I can talk to you about privately, decided to help us in setting up the startup warehouse. He's today a synonym for startups in the country, not just in Bangalore. And I think the startup warehouse has been a super duper box office. If you talk of the 100 crore club and the Bajrangi Bhaijan and the 200 crore club, he is beyond the Bajrangi Bhaijans of the startup industry. And I think today NASCOM startup warehouse is the true Bahubali. It's the true Bahubali of India's startup world. We also have in this India's first IoT lab in partnership with two major MNCs, which we are just waiting for the final sign-offs and we'll be announcing it shortly. We also have in partnership with IAMAI, India's first mobile apps incubator. Okay, what else are we doing? How many of you have seen Skyfall, James Bond? Life of Pi, the, one which, the storm scene which won the visual effects Oscars. Where was the home Skyfall made? Last scene. Where was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be in Scotland. It traces back his roots to Scotland, which is where he grew up. Where was it actually created? Whitefield, Bangalore, by one of the companies and studios we partner with, Motion Picture Company. And forthcoming two movies, Batman vs. Superman, Spectre, November 6th, 2015, the next James Bond, 24th one, and the next edition of The Jungle Book, all being made by talent like you in Bangalore. That's why Bangalore is the IT hub of the world, Chirin. So what is the government doing? So government is setting up the first ever digital media and entertainment city. Again, uh, yesterday Shireen asked me why Uber didn't come to us. Uber has come to us with a proposal for investing several million dollars and creating a lot of jobs, something I was unaware of yesterday. They came again today. So you're, it's called the Shireen effect. They showed up suddenly this morning in my minister's office and I got a call saying, Uber is here, would you like to meet them? And Uber has given us a proposal for investing in Karnataka and creating what will hopefully be a very large software development center along with a lot of jobs. So the answer to your question, that's how, government, how fast government moves. Shireen asks and we answer. You asked yesterday and here's your answer today. Uh, E-governance. Karnataka Mobile One 
has been certified since its launch as the single largest mobile governance platform in the world. We have 4,000 services at launch, which include G2C, B2C, G2E, and G2G services. So why is it a platform and not a Sarkari system? It's a Sarkari system, some babu like me will run it and screw it up. So we didn't want a Sarkari system. We wanted it to be a platform on which young companies, such as many in this room, can come forward. And I'm happy to report that in six months of its launch, with zero being spent on advertising, we have no budget for advertising till now, we are doing one lakh hits and downloads a day. Irrespective of the political party in power, IT and biotechnology and science and technology are a synonym for Bangalore. And Bangalore is a synonym for them. Don't forget, in President Obama's speech, we figured. And at that time, when he was running for candidature, he spoke about getting bangalore right? And now that he's coming to office, he's supporting offshoring. It's not a bad thing to do, which shows there's some IAS officers there too, who make him change his mind once he shifts over from campaign into actual office. So Bangalore continues to be the pride of India as the IT capital and will continue to be the pride of India, irrespective of what media or anybody else say. So I want to end by thanking all of you for making Bangalore the toast of India. It's your energy, your power, which we channelize through government and make India proud and make Bangalore the place from where, as what did Amitabh Bachchan say in what was Kalia? Line maha se shuru hoti hai jaha hum khada hoti hai. So digital India begins from Bangalore. Thank you very much, Vidhi. So thank you, sir. Our next speaker is a co-founder of Practo. It's a company he founded in 2009 when he was still in college. He was studying at NIT Suratkal. And uh, today the company is um, valued at 1,000 odd crores, if I've got that number right from reports. And we first featured Practo on Young Turks in 2013. And we are so happy to have this 27-year-old uh, on the mentor stage today to talk you through uh, what he believes uh, is the mantra of entrepreneurship that nothing is impossible. I've been, you know, in the startup space for about seven years. I've seen it grow from an OCC open coffee club in a small cafe in Koromangla to the humongous thing it's, a, it's, it's today in, in all over India. And it's been a huge journey. What we did was we started selling software to doctors. Okay. Now let me tell you a little bit about selling software. We started selling SaaS software in 2008 and 9. Okay, well before SaaS was even a coin term in India. And selling software itself was quite difficult in India. So we started selling SaaS. And then to add on top of that, we had to sell it to doctors. Right? Not the best bunch to get uh, cash out of. And to add on top of that, we had to do SaaS in a feet on street model because doctors are not online. They were, you know, you couldn't reach them through a Google or a Facebook, etc. You had to actually go meet them and sell, it, sell them directly. Uh, so what do you do when you face such an impossible situation? You go online and read, right? So we went online. All the blogs said, if you're doing SaaS and you're doing feet on street, and if you're doing less than $100 a month, you're going to die. But we found a way. We found a way to actually implement it. And today we are probably India's most successful SaaS product with more than 50,000 doctors using it. So from a very impossible situation where we were faced with a, with a model that everyone had described around the world as a model that will fail and the model that will never succeed. And you're reading everything that's available online and saying everything online tells you that you're going to fail. right? And, and you still believe in it. So from such an impossible situation to come out is very important. So I follow a philosophy where uh, if there's something I believe in, I take an opinion poll and 9 out of 10 people don't believe in it, then it must be really, really good. And I, I really follow it. I think impossible is only because somebody has not tried hard enough. Right? It's just beyond that cusp. And, we, and you can really uh, push towards it. So from that journey of bootstrapping a company you know, right out of college for three years, selling um, SaaS on the streets uh, um, to doctors, you know, we've, come a, we've come a long way. Today we have a consumer portal which again people said having a SaaS product and a consumer product in the same company, quite difficult. Nobody has really pulled it off. There's no company that actually has a SaaS offering and a consumer offering of repute, especially in the healthcare space. When we went into different, you know, when we had to raise funding, we went into different rooms and we said, you know what, what we want to do? We don't want to build a SaaS company. We don't want to build a marketplace. What we want to do is we want to build an account for every individual. 
we want to become a platform. And they uh, very kindly looked at me a few years back and they said, um, platform from India? Really? Southeast Asia? Can we do that? I thought it's only meant it's only reserved for the Silicon Valley. So when 9 out of 10 investors did not like what we said and they said, you know what, if you do this, we are happy with it. But if you do a platform, not our cup of tea, we said, you know, we like this tea. And so we moved on from there and uh, we were able to, you know, kind of build a company from first principles, take on impossible situations and build a very pioneering effort in what we are doing. One of the three cornerstones of our company, uh, which I'm very proud of and I think uh, might be very helpful for you, has been that all these situations, you know, kind of build the character of a company. And there are three very important things that I focus on. The first one is the culture, which was the reason why we continued from college. The second one was the team. Even those four years uh, where we really struggled, the, the, you know, the team was really strong. The, first, the ten people who survived those four years today are in all the different major positions. The third element uh, is your vision. Right? I think vision is supreme. And uh, what held us on to this health account of ours and to be okay with people laughing at that particular concept was because we really believed in it. So these three things, which is the culture, the team, and the vision, is what differentiates companies. So, right, so with that, that's the ethos with which each Praktion uh, works really hard and uh, we try to uh, undo the impossible. The Young Turks Mentors.